To begin this project, I started by making clay figures that would be the designs for the casings of the bells. For casting them, I originally tried a two-part silicone mould and an off-white jesmonite resin, as it's non-toxic and lightweight. It wasn't a seamless finish, and the final results didn't feel right for the concept. I came to the conclusion that the cast should be made of clear resin, but this was going to be a problem as my own studio doesn't have windows or ventilation, and the epoxy resin I would need to work with would create toxic fumes. They'd also need to be placed in a vacuum chamber, which I didn't have access to, and cured under UV lights to harden. So I needed to work with a specialist model maker, and I was really pleased to meet with Ben Nathan from 4D Model Shop in London. Everything we spoke about, ideas, methods, expected results, all just felt spot on. The mould solution that he came up with meant we could pour into the moulds as a single piece rather than having any seam lines, which would also cut down the sanding and filling stages. I was really grateful to work with Ben, as he's an incredibly skilled and experienced maker, and as there needed to be a lot of back and forth between us, it was a really easy and productive relationship. Once I had the complete set of resin casts finished, I needed to sand all the bases and test out where to drill them, so that when I hung them, they wouldn't lean to one side when they were suspended. Next was figuring out how I was going to make them transparent. As the original clay figures were not completely smooth, the mould picked up a lot of these tiny surface textures, which gave the final resin casts a frosted appearance. I tried polishing them, but it didn't make them clear enough and wasn't time efficient. I tried painting on a thin coat of resin, and it made them clear, but the resin would split on the surface. Sanding them with a low-grit sandpaper helped the resin adhere to the surface, but then I lost so much of the fine details. After a lot of experimentation, I decided UV-resistant lacquer spray was going to be the best solution, and I built up two or three coats of this on the casts. This method didn't lose any of the detail, and had a completely transparent finish. However, the lack of ventilation in my studio and any extraction would scupper me here again. I couldn't do it outside as I didn't want any particles to settle in the lacquer while it was drying. London Sculpture Workshop came to my rescue. I've attended a number of their sculpture and design courses over the past few years and worked with them in my freelance work so I knew that they had great workshops. The directors Giles Corby and Jessica Mello were extremely kind and let me use their spaces for this project and I was able to work in a clean, indoor space with windows and extractors for safety. While I was there, I was also able to spray the bells that would sit inside the resin casts. The first problem with spraying them was the paint was easy to scratch off. I tried cleaning and sanding them first, but I had the same problem. Instead, I applied a deep red primer first, which also helped with the final colour, as I wasn't pleased with the shade of red I was getting directly from the spray cans. The structure of the whole piece was tricky to settle on and kept changing as the idea developed. I wanted a single level of acrylic that would be suspended just above the bells. So that I could physically see the size and get an idea of the piece in real life, I made scale drawings in my studio to figure out the best dimensions and did the maths for spacing the casts. I found the most amazing company to laser cut the final designs called Swordfish Works in London, run by a really friendly married couple. Working with Robert Danton Rees, he advised me on the strength of the acrylic based on the different thicknesses and the best ways to hang the piece and avoid warping or stress fractures. They really did just go above and beyond at all points through the process and were incredibly supportive and knowledgeable. Now I had to make a space to put all the separate parts of the piece together. I needed to be able to move it while working and easily transport it to be photographed and videoed, so I built a wood frame to work with. Once that was up, I could begin building the acrylic structure. I used stainless steel rope with aluminium end stops to connect the two acrylic parts to each other. It was strong, but without being too disruptive to the aesthetic. After stringing the bells into the resin casts and the beads for the top section, I was able to begin adding all the pieces to the structure. Getting the heights correct was fiddly and slow, and the tension in the beads was a lot of experimentation but it really was incredible to see the final piece slowly emerge. Before I could finish installing the final parts, I needed to clean the whole thing with a specialised anti-static polish. 
This was to prevent the buildup of static electricity in the acrylic that kept attracting dust in the air, and that would have shown up in the final photos and videos. To document it, I worked with photographer David Rowland. Looking at his phenomenal body of work online, I knew he had worked extensively in the style I was looking for. He visited me beforehand and we spoke through the project and the piece, and I went to see their studio and the setup and the space. Mike Faulkner joined us on the day to be the DOP for the video element, and we got some amazing shots. Mike helped edit the footage and had an incredible eye for making a video that showed off the piece while also complementing the concept, and he supported me in making a custom soundtrack. I'd never made anything like this piece before, and there were many unforeseen challenges along the way, but those were the parts I valued the most. Through all the failures and having to problem solve and find solutions, I learnt a huge amount and developed entire new skill sets. I can't thank Shape Arts enough for this opportunity. I was able to move out of my normal styles and mediums and try something different, mastered new techniques, and opened up my practice on a scope I could never have imagined. I was able to tackle a topic in an ambitious way and was supported at every step. I feel really honoured to be part of the Shape community, and this has been an experience I will never forget and has taught me so much that I will benefit from for the rest of my career.